Hello my soccer universe, we're halfway through this new league phase in the Champions League and I don't know if it's the same with you, I don't quite cannot make sense of it. And I think part of it is because if you start a regular league season, you know that you shouldn't look at the table after let's say around 10 games or so on. And these 10 games are only for an 18 or 20 team league. Now we have four games in into a 36 team league. It's really, really weird overall uh, looking at the standings. Yes, we see certain trends developing and yes, UEFA with the draw procedure tried to make it that we get relatively even schedules, but even the uneven schedules really keep on showing. I mean, we said that Celtic have the easiest schedules. Celtic are kind of higher than you would expect. PSG had the toughest schedule, PSG are currently at the outset looking in. I still think that PSG will get in and this makes the whole thing so awkward. My other big problem so far with the format is that in the previous format you knew exactly who you will play when. So you had roughly an idea of what is the succession of games. Now you probably know the games for your own team, honestly for Milan. I didn't know until I checked now how the further games will develop. And this is also a problem, it's kind of a little bit unpredictable, the whole thing, and that makes it also harder to gauge. In addition, if you look at Milan, they only have played pot one and pot two teams so far. The easy part of the schedule is coming now, so it's also not only that the schedule might be harder or softer, it's also that some schedules are front-loaded and some are back-loaded. A back-loaded one, for instance, is Brest, who's sitting really high on the table right now, but have they really played anyone? Yes, Leverkusen, I give them that. But the two Austrian teams and Sparta Prague, of course you would expect that a team from France gets a lot of points there. So yeah, little bit weird the whole thing. Of course, there's also then that usually there's one day that has some great action, another day that has not so great action. This time I think Tuesday was a whole lot better than we had Wednesday. We also see that big teams really take the opportunity to save some players for important league games. Look at Inter against Arsenal. And so all this promise that every game counts, in a way it does, but since more than half of the teams are anyway getting into the playoffs, some big teams can definitely rest their players. And I'm not sure if this reform as of now did really work out that well. I still want to wait. Probably have to see a few years with this new league phase because everyone is kind of still feeling themselves into it. I'm not calling for a reform or going back to the old format yet. Of course. Of course, the big story for me was Milan's win at Real Madrid. Huge win for Milan. Was coming completely unexpected. Or did it? Real Madrid were not that great as of late. Which kind of, I mean, internally, I'm almost playing down this win. And even when you look at the post-game comments by Fonseca, who says it's easier to play against Real Madrid than to Monza, because Monza is playing man-to-man -man coverage, whereas Real Madrid is wide open on the back. I see his point. But is that really what we need to emphasize on? I also have to say we had some really bad performances by German teams, where Bayern and Dortmund got two rather meager home wins, and all the others lost, and sometimes lost big. And, of course, English teams, only a single win, but the win comes to Liverpool. Liverpool, who are leading the table, the only perfect team so far. Honest lots of teams, I don't want to say outperforming their own level, but definitely outperforming expectations. At the moment, it seems said on that Liverpool will finish very, very high and they will get the buy. So, let's see. Well, unexpected wins are always the best ones, I have to say. And Milan going to the Bernabeu and winning their 3-1 was a real surprise, especially since Milan have not been that great as of late. But to be honest, as have been Real Madrid. I mean, they should have lost to Stuttgart, they could have lost to Dortmund at home. And now Milan actually completed the job against them. I think even though the stats maybe point a little bit more towards Real Madrid because of the late search that they had to get maybe an equalizer, I think the win for Milan was very well deserved. Also had one hero, a clear hero in Mike Mignot and for once Rafa Leao also did show up. And yes, the opening stages were maybe controlled by Real Madrid but then it's a corner kick, Pulisic rips it in and Ja heads it in from a short distance, 12 minute Milan take the lead, look comfortable and then they give away a penalty where Emerson seemingly swipes Vinny Jr honestly really harsh penalty call to me because Vinny was looking for that one and yes beach ball for Vinny no golden ball for you he steps up and converts it and that was the only shot that Mike Magnot did not save 
also something to note here. But Milan got back into the game and had more chances and then when Leao takes a shot it is just parried by Lunin and Morata from a short distance gets it into the more or less empty net and it is Morata, former Real Madrid player who just had come from Atleti who was actually whistled by the Bernabeu crowd that gets Milan the go-ahead goal and honestly it kind of looked comfortable in the second half. Leao, brilliant chance with a header from a short range where Lunin makes a great save, could have already made it 3-1. And then Reinders gains the ball in midfield, gives it to Leao, who goes on one of his irresistible runs, puts it back to Reinders, maybe not even hitting him well, but Reinders beautifully controls it, puts it on net, it's 3-1. And that already made it look quite comfortable. Yes, Rüdiger then scored a goal in the 81st minute, that could have made the game tight again, but he was marginally offside. But yeah, I think if Milan would have won this 4-1, this would have been out of line, although I think the 3-1 is a much more accurate reflection of what that game was. Huge win for Milan. Now they have played against all the pot ones and all the pot two teams and are sitting on two wins and two losses. Same record as Real Madrid and that looks actually much more promising than what we were saying after the first two match days. Two notable post-match points. A. It was kind of curious and Fonseca did not point out Leao who I think was really good but of course, Mike Magnol made many great saves and was the clear match winner. But also, Angelotti seemingly always tends to lose against his Milan. I mean, Angelotti is as Milan as his Real Madrid. He's more Milan than his Real Madrid. So you can always count on Angelotti doing good stuff for Milan. Sure, he didn't want to lose this one. So I'm not going to make that point. But I think he still cannot find the balance in his team. He even admitted as much. The early games on Tuesday were rather one-sided. I mean, PSV go 4-0 over Girona. This was a game where nothing went right for Girona because the few chances that they missed they got a red card when they were already 2-0 down they have them Flamingo and Malik Tillman scoring the goals and then later on it becomes really lopsided with Bakayoko and the Krejci on goal to top it off as I said good performance for PSV and very unlucky for Girona meanwhile Dinamo Zagreb have erased all the memories of their opening they lost to Bayern Munich where they lost 9-2 getting another away win they never had two away wins in the Champions League this time it's a 4-1 at Slovan Bratislava and that despite Slovan taking a 5th minute lead by the 10th minute speaker already gets equalizer. Sucic, 30th minute, gets the lead for Dinamo and they never relinquish it. Kulenovic scores in a brace in the second half. The other big duel, of course, on Tuesday was Xabi Alonso's return with Leverkusen to Anfield. And while Leverkusen sometimes showed that they can play nice and attractive football, overall it was Liverpool who completely dominated that matchup. And Luis Diaz was the hero of the evening, scoring a hat-trick, opening score in 61st, Kakpo, then in 63rd, gets one back and then two more Luis Diaz goals showed all the frailties in the Leverkusen defense. And then we also had two Italian-French duels, ending with a slight advantage for the French sides. First off, Juventus earn a 1-1 draw at Lille. They were down to a Jonathan David goal, nicely seized by Jegrova in the 27th minute, although Juve would have already deserved an equalizer before the half. They get it then through a penalty by Vlahovic. Overall, I think Juve were a little bit more mature than Lille, which was a tad bit surprising. And let's be honest, I think Bologna showed that they can play on the same level as a Monaco. However, they are just inexperienced enough the little chance that they had they didn't convert in the end. Tilo Kera gives a very late winner for Monaco who already has got a go-ahead goal through single that was clearly called off for a foul. Which means now that Monaco is hitting on very respectable 10 points. The sensation of the evening was clearly sporting Lisbon's performance against Manchester City and if United fans really wanted to have a taste of what Ruben Amorim could do if he's given time, this was definitely it against their City rivals, of course. And the game started as everyone would expect, or in the fourth minute Foden put City ahead and City controlled the game for a good half hour and probably could have doubled if not tripled their lead if they want, but they also gave away a glaring chance to Jökeres who missed rather badly, but Jökeres in the 38th minute gets the equalizer and Sporting were kind of lucky in the game. And then right after the half, Arusho gives Sporting a lead and then a Jokers penalty doubles that lead. It's 3-1 Sporting and then there was no looking back. Yes, penalty chance for Holland that he puts on to the crossbar. But then there's another penalty given Jokers again converts. He is dead on. Probably the best Scandinavian striker at this very moment. Pretty amazing stuff by Sporting. And as I said, it really sucks that they're losing their manager now. I hope they can keep this up because this is a really exciting side. Towards the end of the Tuesday games, I thought, you know what would be perfect? It would be perfect if Sturm Graz could get at least a point, if not a win at Dortmund. Yes, would not have been deserved the win because Dortmund were largely dominating Sturm Graz and Sturm Graz had very few chances far and in between. So a lead for Dortmund would have been really deserved. However, 
come around the 70th minute. Suddenly Mika Beard had a free header that he puts wide and you thought at that point that Sturm Graz could actually snatch a winner and then Ivo loses the ball and in the end it comes to Marlin who gives Dortmund the overall deserved win but again another gut punch that showed the inexperience of Sturm Graz in the Champions League. And then the other sensational team is of course Celtic beating Leipzig 3-1. What's wrong with Leipzig? Four losses in four Champions League games. That is un expected, especially from a team that's very much on top in the German Bundesliga. And they even took the lead through Christoph Baumgartner getting his first Champions League goal. There was a certain Austrian angle to the whole affair as well, because Nicolas Kuhn, who had come from Rapid to Celtic ahead of the season, scored two goals to turn the game around. And then after they have Hatate adds a third one, giving Celtic the second win. And their 7-2 loss at Dortmund is more or less forgotten. It was a true bonehead moment that snapped Aston Villa's winning streak, losing 1-0 at Bruges thanks to Hans van Aken penalty. What was the bonehead moment? Well, playing out, Emi Martinez plays it over to Tyro Minks, who picks it up with his hand to pull it back to properly play it out. Should have been a penalty when Arsenal did the same thing as Bayern Munich in the quarterfinals last year. This time it was a penalty. Hans von Aken, as I said, convert. Not much coming from Villa. It was not a good game. So I cannot even say that Bruges deservedly won that one. More streak snapped. Both Schachter and Young Boys get their first goals of the season. Schachter much the better team. However, it's a pressing moment that allows Imeri in the 27th minute to give Young Boys the lead. Then shortly thereafter, when the Young Boys defender had to be treated on the sideline, they were manless and Zubkov gets the equalizer and then a great move by Zudakov 10 minutes later where he goes through the defenders and then a long range shot gives Schachter the lead and in the end the win because the young boys really cannot produce any other convincing chances anymore. And Brest remained the sensation of the Champions League getting another win this time a 2-1 at Sparta Prague. Overall they were the better team another rather mad match. Fernandes in the 37th minute it was coming all along so Brest lead at the halftime and then Ajorc who was probably the best player initiates an own goal by Karin in the 80th minute to settle the game for Brest. Very late on Ola Yunji pulls one back for Sparta who were occasionally threatening but Brest get their third win of this Champions League season. Yes they only played against minor opponents but they are sitting a very high up the table a very good chance of advancing. Let's be honest the big clash between Inter and Arsenal was more or less a letdown because both teams were more concerned with their games on the weekend and with this one making a few lineup changes and Inter shut up shop and completely nullified Arsenal who had trouble actually creating chances. And then Inter get the lucky break. It was a shot that went off on Marino's hands. It's a penalty. Chalanoglu converts. It was not really coming although they hit very early on the crossbar through Dumfries. Arsenal sees a chance saved off the line by Dumfries. There was another one in there but it was always summer that could clear it in. It was a very Italian performance by Inter. That saw them bring home a 1-0 win. The third one out of four games and still unbeaten. And on top of that, not having conceded a goal. It was a slightly different story when Stuttgart took on Atalanta. Atalanta overall the more seasoned team, I would say. Very nervy first half. It changed when the Catalare came on in the second half and then he dances through Stuttgart defense, finds Lukman in the middle. It's 1-0 Atalanta. Atalanta much the better team. There was only one semi-chance by Fürich where it could have been dangerous. Cannot really get the shot off and late on. Comedy of errors allows Zaniolo to more or less run free on goal of Stuttgart and make it 2-0. Atalanta also one of the stories still unbeaten and still very much in the running. It's the two home draws that don't look good for them. Bayern's game against Benfica had to be postponed by 15 minutes then Bayern showed up in their white third jerseys. I think made for a better jersey matchup potentially. In any case Bayern bossed this game but only scored a single goal. When a Sané cross finds Kane's head who takes it over to Musiala who heads it in from a short distance in the 67th minute. Probably could have been more. There was really not much much going on for Benfica offensively. It was the desperation matchup of match day four and the first ever meeting between Atleti and PSG and Atleti steal three points. PSG battered Atleti throughout the game. They took a lead when a defensive error gets the ball to Osman Dembele who takes it over to Warren Sayer and Marie who lobs goalie Oblak however <laughs> just three minutes later after a Simeone shot is parried the ball comes back to him and he finds Molina after again the ball bounces off PSG defenders. It's 1-1 just 
just four minutes after PSG had taken the lead and plenty of chances as I said and if Ashraf Hakimi would have an eye for his teammate probably PSG could have taken the lead maybe even doubled the lead but it goes then into stoppage time and in stoppage time Griezmann is wandering on the left side plays a nice ball over sees Correa and Correa just steps past the defender and gives Atleti the win Naruma did not look good on this one but I think it also got the slightest of deflections off the leg of the defender meanwhile Barcelona keep on dancing this time it's a 5-2 win at Cervena Svesda in Belgrade yes they could have taken the lead but the goal was chalked off and then Inigo Martinez after Rafinha corner had it in to make it 1-0 a little bit against the run of play Silas gets an equalizer which rattled Barcelona for just a little bit but then again a Rafinha shot onto the post and Lewandowski taps it in he is the top goal scorer in the Champions League at the Belgrade Maracana which is rather remarkable as he was playing only his second game there and Lewandowski gets the third goal for Barcelona as well in the 53rd minute two minutes later Rafinha again Rafinha he's probably the best player for Barcelona at the moment makes it 4-1 Fermin Lopez stumbles in for a fifth in the 76th and then Barcelona go on cruising mode and they concede one more this time through Milson. And at the very last, Austria get their first Champions League win. Salzburg go to Feyenoord and deservedly won 3 1. And I, for one, was not that happy because I like Feyenoord a ton more than Salzburg, especially since Gernot Trauner is playing there. Salzburg actually played it tight defensively and then they hit on the counter-attack just before the halftime break. A really unmotivated rollout by Wellenreuter is intercepted by Gloch. Gloch runs, 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 cross in. Konate completely forgotten by the Feyenoord defense. It's one little Salzburg. And then shortly after the break, similarly, it was kind of a weird goal after, I think, another corner kick where the ball just bounced a little bit around Piotrowski to Konate deflected by Trauner. 2 nil Salzburg. The writing was on the wall. Yes, Feyenoord did not give up creative chances. However, then 80th minute, Nadja sent off for a red card. You know, starts to the ankle. A minute later, a really brilliant goal by Haji Musa gets Feyenoord back into the game. And then again, VAR intervenes. It's a penalty for Salzburg after Capaldo is failed by Hanschko. He puts it onto the crossbar, but Salzburg stay in there. And Gindo, with a thundering shot, re establishes the two goal lead for Salzburg. That came out of nowhere for Salzburg. Salzburg game has not been good. Maybe this is to turn around for them but the points are really good for Austria so maybe they can get a few more for the coefficient. Last time around, the expected standings were very much a Premier League who's who with all the four Premier League teams sitting up top. Well, with three of them losing, they are of course dropping out. It's now Inter. Really good record that sits in second spot. Barcelona Slightly behind, Barcelona is definitely one of the better teams in Europe at the moment. I really would like to see them against a good Premier League side to kind of really being able to gauge how good they really are. But from what I've seen so far, Barcelona really, really impressive. We've also Sporting high up there. Given their results, also not that expected. And Dortmund, yeah, that's a little bit more expected. Monaco and Manchester City round out the teams that are for now projected to get the buy. But you saw it already when you compare it to the previous video. This changes after every match day and rather wildly. Of the teams that are on the outside looking in, I mean, the big name definitely is PSG. It's gonna be a tight one. Brest sitting at 10. That's a great French performance. Whereas then there are some big names around a cut of points between who will get a home game in the playoff round and who will get an away game first. So we have Milan, Bayern, Real Madrid, Atletico, Juve. That's some pretty big names in there. And yeah, the bubble teams, I think, started Celtic, although Celtic will probably make it. Benfica, PSV, Zagreb, Feyenoord, Stuttgart. I think those are teams that where PSG is eyeing. Yeah, maybe they can mess up and I'll get in. Don't want to talk much about the other teams. I don't think any of these will qualify for the next round. And there also have been only minor changes in the overall favorite. It's still City. However, you see already, City is not very likely to finish now in the top eight. It's only bit more than a 50% chance, yeah, losing to Sporting does it for you, whereas Liverpool is very much set on. Liverpool most likely will have a buy. Real Madrid, Arsenal lose a little bit in the game, in the game, but you know, it's not much. It's still cities to lose overall. Liverpool, Real Madrid right there. But I think with Arsenal, Inter, Barcelona, we're getting a little bit in there. Most importantly for me, Milan make a step up again in 14th place and a 95% chance to qualify for the next round. I mean, you know, six points after four games and having played all your hard opponents will do that for you.
When we look at the upcoming matches, it starts and stops on Wednesday. Liverpool against Real Madrid, I mean, doesn't get much better than that. We also have a Bayern against PSG matchup, which is really, really a tight one, I would say, because, you know, PSG definitely need the points and Bayern also should not drop too many as well. An outside classic could be Barcelona against Brest, because Brest have been doing well, but I see this only a one-way street. Sporting taking on Arsenal. This will be the first home game for Sporting in Europe without Amorim, so curious to see that one as well. Looking at Milan, going to Bratislava needs to be three points. I mean, there is no doubt about that. The Austrian team, Salzburg, have to go to Bayer Leverkusen. And Sturm Graz against Girona, maybe there's a smidgen of a chance for Sturm Graz to get the first points there. Yeah. Performances overall have been alright, but I would say the inexperience definitely shows. And then a slipper, Celtic against Klaprush. Well, these are my thoughts on what was happening in the Champions League in the midweek. Of course, it's all Milan, Milan, Milan. Winning at Real Madrid is still a big thing, even if Real Madrid are not all that great at this very moment. But then I have my reservations about the overall competition. But, you know, we'll see about that. Let me know your thoughts on the Champions League. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I'll talk to you soon about more things in my soccer universe. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!